Sutra. The Buddha's body is not of the past, nor is it of the future. In a single thought, it presently appears, accomplishing the way and entering nirvana. Like forms conjured from an illusion, which are not produced and which do not arise, the Buddha's body is also this way. It manifests without having been produced. Commentary: The previous verse teaches people how to break off their attachments so that they don't engage in false reckonings, such as how many bodies the Buddha has. To calculate like that is to try to find something to do when there's really nothing to do. You shouldn't make this kind of trouble for yourself. Now, lest someone say, "Well, their number may be unreckonable, but Buddhas did exist in the past at any rate." This stanza of verse says, "The Buddha's body is not of the past. In the past, were there bodies of the Buddha?" No, nor is it of the future. It's also not the case that the Buddha's bodies will be produced, produced in the future. Then, are there bodies of the Buddha in the present? No, there aren't. In a single thought, it presently appears. The Buddha, in a single thought, manifests being born. He also manifests accomplishing the way right in that single thought, and he manifests accomplishing the way. And entering nirvana, the eight stages of a Buddha's accomplishing the way do not go beyond a single thought. The eight stages are descending from the Tushita Heaven Palace, entering the womb, dwelling in the womb, leaving the womb, leaving the home life, accomplishing the way, turning the Dharma wheel, entering nirvana. Like forms conjured from an illusion, which are not produced and which do not arise, the Buddha's body is also this way. It manifests without having been produced. The Buddha manifests characteristics, but they are like dreams, illusions, bubbles, shadows, or conjured appearances. But at the ultimate level, the Buddha's body isn't produced, nor does it arise. Just as illusory forms are not real, so too the Buddha's body is not produced, and does not arise. The Buddha's body is also like the principle revealed in this analogy. It manifests without having been produced. It's not like it's not produced, nor is it extinguished, and so it's not defined, nor pure, and it neither increases nor decreases. This is the basic substance of the Buddha, which is thus thus unmoving, clear, and constantly bright. Question: What are the three builders of time? You mentioned that the Buddha manifests its bodies throughout the the three builders of time. Answer: They are the past, present, and future. Question: Who is Dragon Seed Buddha? Answer is just the name of that Buddha. Question: Is it a name like Joe or Joan? Yes. Sutra. At that time, Jude Banner Bodhisattva received the Buddha's spiritual power, universally contemplated the ten directions, and spoke these verses. Commentary. At that time, refers to the time when Wisdom Banner Bodhisattva finished speaking verses. For all living beings in the ten directions, according to their potentials, Jude Banner Bodhisattva received the Buddha's spiritual power because he had perfected the six paramitas and the ten thousand practices, which are extremely valuable and lofty dharma doors. He is given the name Jude Banner Bodhisattva. He also received Shakyamuni Buddha's. Barotrana Buddha's spiritual power, and also relied upon the power of spiritual penetrations of all Buddhas of the ten directions and three builders of time. Spirit penetrates outward, and the power arises from within. So the power of spiritual penetrations comes from within and without. When this Bodhisattva spoke these verses. He received the powers of the Buddhas of the ten directions, and and three birds of time.
What does it mean to receive the Buddha's power? It means that he knew the Buddhas of the ten directions and three periods of time abiding in the pure land of constant still and unmoving light using the power of their spiritual penetrations to aid him. He was aided by their power and as a result attained great wisdom, great eloquence and great spiritual strength. Then he universally contemplated the ten directions. He investigated the cause and conditions of living beings throughout the ten directions and then he spoke these verses. He used verses to speak the Buddha Dharma so that he chose to express Sutra The Buddha's body has no limit, yet it can manifest bodies that have a limit. According to what should be seen, the guiding master thus appears. The Buddha's body has no location, yet it fills up all locations. Like emptiness, it has no boundaries, thus it is difficult to conceive of. It is not the place of the mind's workings, nor does the mind arise within it. Within the states of all Buddhas, ultimately there is neither production nor extinction. A cataract that covers the eye is neither within or nor without those in the world who see the Buddha should know he is also like this. Commentary The Buddha's body has no limit. The Buddha's true body pervades and fills up all places. The Bodhisattva tells us in these verses that there is no way to speak of its measure. How vast it is everywhere, you don't know, since you cannot know, is therefore said that the Buddha's body has no limit, it reaches to the end of empty space. But if you try to grasp at presences then, there isn't even one body which exists. Yet it can manifest bodies that have a limit. Although the Buddha's original substance is limitless and boundless, still it can manifest perhaps one, two, three living beings should perceive. A guiding master thus appears, the Buddha spontaneously manifests, so it is said. The Buddha is like the pure moon, eternal. Abiding eternally, abiding in empty space, if the water of living beings' minds is clear, body will be reflected in it. The Buddha's basic substance is limitless. His response to limitless capacities of living beings is also limitless. So the text says, according to what uh, should be seen, the guiding master first appears. The Buddha's body has no location. The body of the Buddha doesn't reside in any certain place. He is present and yet not present. The Buddha's body is numberless and limitless, yet he fills up all locations. The Buddha's body has no location, no place of existence, yet it fills up all places. But there is nowhere where it is not present, like emptiness, it has no boundaries. The Buddha's body is just like the void. There are no boundaries, no end to it. Thus, it is difficult to conceive of. You can't conceive of it with the mind or speak of it with language. It is not the place of the mind's workings. Your mind can't recognize this principle. The mind can't conceive of the Buddha's body, nor does the mind arise within it. The mind also means give rise to an understanding of the principle of the bodies. Within the states of all Buddhas, ultimately there is neither production nor extinction. Why does Jod Banner? Bodhisattva say that the mind cannot conceive of this principle nor understand it because within the state of all Buddhas, ultimately there is neither production nor extinction. This state is neither produced nor destroyed. So how can the mind arise within it? Arising is a form of production. So 
these states which are not produced and not extinguished cannot come forth from the mind. And a cataract that covers the eye is neither within nor without. Those in the world who see the Buddha should know he is also like this. The analogy here is a film over the eye. The film is not within the eye, nor is it outside of the eye. Yet it is something between the eye organ itself and the connected tissue which makes up this film. By the same token, the sentient beings who perceive the Buddha should know he is also like this. You should know the Buddha can be likened to a film on the eyes which is neither in the eyes nor outside of the eyes. It also isn't the middle living beings see a living being see the Buddha. They also see the transformation bodies of the Buddha and the pure respond body of the Buddha. But the Buddha's basic substance isn't the transformation body of all the response body it fills up all places so the bodhisattva says you should know he's also like this sutra in order to benefit living beings the first come one comes into the world living beings perceive his coming but in actually he does not appear in the world it can't be that one perceives the buddha in a certain uh, country or on a certain day or night. Nor is it possible to delineate him in terms of years, months, or a single shana. Commentary The Buddha comes into the world in order to benefit living beings. He causes all living beings who have affinities with him to see the Buddha enter the world so that give rise to the solution uh, to re the resolve for body and cultivate proper equal and right enlightenment the first come one comes into the world the Buddha enters the world the world to benefit all living beings living beings perceive his coming living beings are attached to provisional dhammas they mistake the false for the true. They don't know how the Buddha is up moving within the land of, of constant stillness and light and that in actuality he does not appear in the world. In reality the Buddha doesn't come into the world is only because living being are attacked living beings are attached to the idea that they see the Buddha as coming into the world and then entering Nirvana. It can't be that one perceives the Buddha in a certain country or a certain day or night. Originally, the Buddha pervades he and he fills up the drama realm to so the exhaustion of empty space. So it's not principle to say that the Buddha comes into a um, certain world and doesn't enter another world and so forth. The Buddha manifests in response to the conditions and potential living beings. You can't say that the Buddha is perceived in a certain country. You can't see the Buddha in terms of daytime or nighttime. Nor is it possible to delineate him in terms of years, months, or single shana. You cannot give out. Uh, you cannot figure out the Buddha by means of time or space, not by means of one lifetime or one month or a split second. The Buddha transcends time and transcends empty space. The Buddha can take limitless compass and compress them into a single shana. He can take one shana and expand it into immeasurable compass. The realm of the Buddha transcends time and transgress empty space. It can't be conceived of is ineffable. You should know that you cannot understand the Buddha in terms of country, day or night, years, months, or shanas, or any other divisions of time or space. For the Buddha state is inconceivable and 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 in. 
is incalculable and inconceivable.